Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, Senior Currency Strategist with DailyFX. Today is Wednesday, March 29th, 2017. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America. And the U.S. dollar index is rebounding ever so modestly this morning, 0.13% higher at the time this video was recorded and continuing upon yesterday's gains. What we're seeing here today, however, is not a focus on what's going out of the United States, particularly because it's not that really interesting of a day on the economic docket side of things. Plus the two speakers we have coming up, Fed Evans and Fed Williams, aren't expected to reveal anything new, especially after the wake of Janet Yellen's speech yesterday. But today's really all about what's going on in Europe. Today is Brexit Day, when the UK will formally announce its exit from the European Union when Theresa May delivers her letter of resignation, the UK's letter of resignation to EU President Donald Tusk. Now, this has been by and large priced in. There may be a small market reaction when this actually transpires, but I'm more curious to see what happens with the EU's response. Donald Tusk, the EU president, will return a response which represents the views of the 27 nations inside the EU to Theresa May and the UK at some point over the next 48 hours. And it's supposed to be the cornerstone, if you will, of the EU's negotiating position with the UK over the next two years. Now, as rumor would have it, some things that are pointed out that are worth discussing as they could guide our understanding of this process as time goes on. First off, we're looking at a situation where the EU is going to open up the door for the UK to back out of the Brexit process at any point over the next two years. Uh, they said they don't want to close the door on common sense. Two, Donald Tusk and the EU are going to lay out a set of negotiating positions that make clear to the UK that once Brexit happens and if it officially goes through, they'll have a three-year transition window in order to fully remove themselves and sever their connections to EU institutions like a regulatory body, for example. So the UK is going to be given a little bit of a lifeline here, from my perspective. A wide open door to make sure this transition goes as smooth as possible, if it goes through at all. Now, right now for the pound, probably means we're going to see a lot of two-way volatility ahead of us because there's going to be a lot of news and rumors and negotiating stances that are taken out and revealed publicly and contorted and uh, the whole gamut of things as you know it is a political game so the impact on markets will not just be one directional it will be uh, uh, two-way insofar as we're going to see a lot of big swings i think in the pound abruptly for what seems to be no reason at all over the next several years so you know, buckle in euro pound pound dollar pound swiss pound yen are probably going to be the big ones to look out for. Pound dollar is actually not that appealing of a trade setup right now, considering that we are in the middle of a symmetrical triangle and sitting in the middle of that range. If you're someone who likes to trade momentum or you're a breakout trader, as I tend to be, this is not exactly the ideal place to look for an entry. And you know what? Even if you're a range trader, you're sitting in the middle of the range. It's not the best place in the world to look for a trade entry until we get to a more defined of a level of either, uh, you know, resistance or support. As things stand, Euro Pound is a little bit more interesting for me, given that we are trading on the outside of the trend line going back to the October 10th and January 16th highs. We've been a little bit of a flag the last few days, and we had an attempt at a breakout today, although that has reversed on broader Euro weakness over the course of the session. Right now, I think if you're looking at pairs, Euro Pound, Pound Swiss are fairly similar so far as they've both been uh, trading on the trying to get through the trend line going back to the October and January lows here. Although in pound Swiss, I have it drawn from the uh, November low, treating the flash crash as just that an overshoot in the market. Pound Swiss has been trading within this triangle since post Brexit fairly cleanly, and it's definitely something that should be uh, have an eye kept on it over the coming sessions. One thing that's obscure, want to point out, may not be catching everyone's eye, could be a little bit of a scenario where we have somewhat of a inverse head and shoulders pattern forming here akin to that head and shoulders pattern in euro pound although with the neckline far away in both pound swiss and euro pound these are viewed merely as continuation efforts for the time being pound yen likewise has been moving into uh, what appears to be the lower part of a triangle we saw that price after breaking that longer term downtrend had governed the downside move for about 18 months in pound yen we did get that breakout in November and December outside only to lead to a further consolidation 
in what appeared to be a symmetrical triangle. However, we have started to grind lower through the former swing level that we established on February 7th, right around that 138.54 area, and prices started to put in some closes down below here. So pound yen in context of what's going on, you probably need to see a bigger swing lower in equity markets for pound yen to really get some legs underneath it. Not just the FTSE, but global equity markets like the S&P 500 right now uh, in order for a greater move lower in pound yen. If that's the case, though, 136.45 becomes that first near-term target that we saw on the uh, January 16th low there. If you're looking for long pound entries around this Brexit news and what will transpire over the coming weeks, I think pound kiwi is a fairly interesting setup, as it were, as several of these uh, uh, kiwi crosses are, including euro kiwi itself, although that, again, with the euro weakness today, uh, not exactly moving to the top side as one would expect or hope. But nevertheless, pound kiwi here, seeing that we have this triangle that started to move to the top side, price is well supported not only by recent swings, but momentum has started to turn up. 8 is above the 21, is above the 34 uh, daily EMA, seeing that stochastics and MACD are both pointing higher in bullish territory. Could be an interesting buy the dip if you're looking for a bullish pound setup. Elsewhere today, again, keeping on what's going on with the euro. Yesterday, we had pointed out that for the greenback, we were coming actually into some support. The rising trend line going back to the May 2016, uh, June 16, and then August 16 lows where price did encroach, but not break through the low on the election day. US presidential elections last year. Got pretty close to there, trading down uh, to a low of 98.86 on Monday. However, we've rebounded slightly the last few days. Don't want to say that this is the exact low, considering that we are below the moving averages and indicators are in bearish territory at this point. But uh, seeing as how dollar index is really just uh, inverse of euro dollar, so that 57.6% of dollar index is comprised of euro dollar. Uh, the fact that euro dollar is now at resistance here, the trend line going back to the May 3rd, August 18th, September 8th highs. We found that serve as resistance right away. We're going to want to see if this is merely just a pit stop after breaking the symmetrical triangle or if this is the exact high. Obviously, that has great implications for DXY. If this is the exact high, then DXY is probably bottomed. If not, if this is merely just a pullback after the breakout, then we probably will see more dollar index weakness ahead of ourselves. Of course, a lot of that is contingent upon what the path of Fiscal reform takes place in the United States after the Affordable Care Act replacement was botched last week in the House of Representatives. Uh, now markets are looking to see for any signs if the Trump administration's fiscal stimulus plan actually comes to fruition. The combination of infrastructure spending and tax cuts, as we know, which would expand budget deficits and in turn boost inflationary pressures, which could necessitate a faster cycle of rate tightening from the Fed. Of course, that seems to be out of the equation right now, which is why the dollars come off so much, why something like gold has gone up as yields have come off. Uh, but as it were today, our focus is not so much on what's going on with the US dollar. It's really more about Brexit. And if you're looking for bearish pound setups, Euro pound, pound yen, pound Swiss are there. If you're looking for something more bullish, pound CAD, pound Kiwi are up your alley. And then I think if you're a little bit more patient, pound dollar in the symmetrical triangle is worth watching, but not necessarily worth trading at present time. That's it for me today. I'll be back later on with another video. Of course, you can always reach out to me through the Daily FX Real-Time News Feeds, Tactics, and Twitter at CVecchioFX, which you can access by going to the bit banner or ribbon on the top of the website and clicking on Real-Time News. You can always email me, CVecchio at DailyFX.com. Tomorrow morning, we'll be back uh, 7.30 Eastern, 11.30 GMT in the live trading room for the Central Bank Weekly where we talk about policy and how it's impacting FX markets. You can always register by heading on over to that webinar calendar and selecting the Central Bank Weekly and providing your information to get the link to tomorrow's event. Hopefully I will see you then. If not, good luck trading the next few days and I will talk to you soon.